want to start with the Buffalo Bills. So, firstly, an exciting time for them uh, as a franchise, having, you know, that's a great franchise, isn't it? It was steeped in history, but have had some pretty lean years recently. But it seems like things are on the up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so they got to the playoffs two years ago now, which was the first time in 17 years. uh, And that was Coach McDermott's first year. So it was a big statement for him. And then the the second year is always a bit tough because... There's a lot of expectations put on you doing so well the year before. Uh, You're also in a position where you start taking those players who perhaps had been ingrained in the program before and starting to change the mentality and the culture. So now year three for him, it's, uh, well, as you can see, we're doing all right, to be honest. Let's talk about that mentality and culture because he's, uh, you know, one of the younger head coaches in the NFL. And I guess because of the success Sean McVay's had in particular, they're often, and maybe it's because they share the same first yeah. name as well. <laughs> <laughs> the real deep dive there, yeah. but they do tend to get compared quite a lot. And, and in a way, I suppose that probably benefits Coach McDermott in that, you know, he goes under the radar a little bit, doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's had some really great mentors along the way. Um, Ron Rivera from the Panthers, Andy Reid, and guys that he's really, he just learned from the ground up. And a lot of people use that word culture. And actually, how do you describe that? How do you get a team to completely buy into what you're trying to put forward? And for him, it's not just the team. At the beginning, when he first came into head coach role, he got the entire building. So including your ticketing, your media, everyone together, and he let them know, this is who we are and this is what we're going to do going forward. Mm. And I think when you can get that buy-in from everybody that's around you, it's really important to have a longevity. And then you see the community of all of Buffalo now because he really instills in his players and the coaches, go out there, help the community. These are the people that are going to be there fighting for us every Sunday. Fascinating to hear that. I mean, it echoes of Bill Walsh, for example, you know, who, yeah. who advocate absolutely the same thing. That Of course, it starts with the the, the 53 man roster of the coaching staff, but it has to extend to every single person in that building, it has to understand what we're what we're all about. What about your personal journey then, coaching with the Bills? Talk a bit about that and, and the experience and, and the key things you took away from it. Yeah, absolutely. So I've been so fortunate to be predominantly with tight ends and with coach Rob Boris. Some people remember him from Hard Knocks from sure. the Rams. Yeah, you yeah, saw yeah. him leaving and arriving at Buffalo. And for me, he has been the best mentor I could have ever imagined. He has taught me so much in terms of preparation, how to care about the players, not just in a get on the field and do your job, but you need to care about them as people and how you go about doing that at an elite level when you need to get the best from them, but at any point they could possibly go. Um, So he's been fantastic. He just kept building me up in terms of giving me more responsibilities. It can be a bit intimidating at times when you're dealing with people who have perhaps been in the NFL or just been around American football for so long. But for example, in OTAs, he had me installing all of the offensive playbook for all of our rookies. Um, Unfortunately for us, we lost some of our veteran players to injury, but actually for me, that was fantastic because all my rookie players then got the most amount of reps right. that you could ever imagine uh, through OTAs. So and just, you must build up a real bond there as well and get really attached. Oh my gosh, yeah. So even last year, we had Charles Clay mm-hmm. and him and I still chat all the time. And we had Jason Kroom who had stayed over uh, from last year. So the new guys that have come through, just kind of being on that journey with them and watching them kind of grow and take their first few steps, get involved in their first game. I mean, there's so much pressure on them and they handle it so well for being in this completely new world. So yeah, it feels like family really. And especially tight ends, you know, there's only four of us right. in that room. So it's uh, yeah, it's definitely a family I'm, I'm missing, but it's fantastic to watch them on Sundays. Let's talk about Josh Allen in particular, because he is a player that really excites me. And again, I think because he was so prolific on the ground and with his legs last season, perhaps underestimated as a, as a complete quarterback. And we know that can be a, a dangerous position to take, right? Uh, do you think people are underestimating Josh Allen? And can you see him having worked closely with him as one of these quarterbacks that is going to be a franchise quarterback, a, a top quarterback in the NFL for 10, 12, 15 years? Yeah, absolutely. So Josh is a fantastic person. And at the same time, he's only 21 years right. old. So it's a lot on so him. Forget this though, he's 21 years old. So he's much on his shoulders. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> um, but 
he has had a he had some growing pains last year, which were present in terms of trying to throw that 60 yard long pass when you had a 10 yard check down in front of you. Um, and which rookie quarterback hasn't had growing pains? Exactly. Peyton Manning had growing pains. Oh my gosh, exactly. And and that's part of it. That's part of your initiation into the league. I right. mean, defenses were throwing crazy looks at him. We had one team we played where they were doing a Tampa two and the corner ended up dropping to be the Tampa two player. And it's just as a rookie, that's a lot going on. Yeah. But I mean, he is has it speed that the rookies give you saying you're working closely with them is speed seems to be the single most challenging factor about the upgrade from college to NFL. Yeah, absolutely. And you'll find that even with our international, our player pathway players, right. that the speed at which it all happens, because these guys have been doing it for such a long time, it's a bit overwhelming at time. But actually, if you look at Josh this year, he is second fastest quarterback in the league, huge on him. But he now doesn't only just run with the ball, he can make these passes and he's threading the needle, which are, it's so impressive. It's just great to see him mature as much as he has. And he really has taken on the responsibility of being the quarterback, but becoming the franchise quarterback that Buffalo so desperately want him to be. Let's talk about that element of leadership as well, because different quarterbacks approach it in, in different ways. You get the kind of old school, good old boy style, you know, Brett Favre, uh, you get quite calm and composed characters that aren't necessarily the most vocal, but they do their work on the field. Where does Alan fit in that spectrum of different styles of quarterbacks? So he's definitely getting more into he's he's vocal definitely with the guys but he is because he's like a big kid he gets everyone around him excited he gets so uh, just exuberant over the idea that someone else has scored and he wants to be involved in all of those celebrations he wants to be thinking of what new little celebration we can have together and it's great to have that sort of energy. He brings a very different level of energy. And it's not just with the offense. When the defense are doing great things, he's over with them. And everybody in that building respect him. And they just love his character. Mm. So the future, as we said at the top, is, is looking bright for Buffalo. How deep do you think they can go this season? I'm, I'm seeing playoffs. I, I mean... Let's just put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> didn't even blink. I didn't even blink. No, I mean the fact they've this is the first time they've won all their preseason games. Yeah. And I know that's not a great example, but two and zero so far. They've got the Bengals this weekend, which we'll chat about later. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty clear who you're going to pick for that yeah, one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean the Patriots are in their division, of course, which is its own conversation. But it's a wild card, but definitely doable. Absolutely, and I think that they have the DNA, but they have the drive and the hunger to get back to the playoffs again. I, I absolutely think they can do it. Spoken like a true Bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bill's Mafia. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the Nat Coombs show presented by Paddy Power Fantasy. There's plenty more where that came from. Just click subscribe to ESPN UK and you won't miss a trick.